In my previous video about function, I talked about how the output of one function can be another function, or in my analogy at the time, a library of libraries. But at the time, I didn't go into much detail about one of the most common uses of that for functional programming. Hi, my name is Wolf, and I'm the barely functional dev who will be explaining all this to you. Just to recap, here we have the set notation that I used back in my very first video where I talked about what are functions anyways, where we have the set of inputs on the left that then map to each of the possible outputs on the right. And the interesting thing that you may have noticed about this is we're only handling a single input mapping to a single output in this case. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey, wait, aren't there functions that take two parameters or three or even 11 billion? And you'd be right about that, except the last one. But the thing is, this, uh, this way of thinking about functions where every single function takes in a single input and then produces a single output is actually a cleaner way to model the function itself. And it leads to a lot of the advantages I've been talking about of functions themselves. So in order to reconcile the difference between the two, we're gonna need a couple more tools in our toolbox. So going to the function example here, we have the notion of an input being a value. And in this case, uh, from the previous example, we were looking at a whole library of different books and the input was a, a topic of books. And then the output in this case was a, a new function. And that function would take each one of the books and then it would summarize that book based on the topic that you'd given it as input before. And so you may not have realized it at the time, this is a powerful technique for reuse, but it's also provides power in order to express, in this case, we have multiple things that we're trying to compute in our function. We have a topic and we have a book and the two of them together combine into the eventual output in this case. So to take this into a more concrete example, if we look at a mapping for a function that say we wanna multiply two numbers together, one way we could achieve that is to have the input be the first of the numbers we want to multiply, say, you know, one, two, so on to infinity. And then the output of that function is it's another function. And then that function would basically have the first of the numbers we want to multiply is essentially baked into that function already. And it would just take the second of those numbers that we want to multiply and then produce the actual output. And the name for this concept is we are partially applying the function. That is, we have a function that returns other functions and basically we keep applying arguments as deep as we need to go. In this case, we only have two, but you can imagine how this same concept would apply as deep as you needed it to. And then the output of that call is basically you pass it as many different inputs as you want, you apply it as many times as you need to, and then the result of that is a new function which is ready to receive the next of the arguments. Or if you've already applied all of the arguments, then you just get the results. And the, the reverse of this concept in technical terms is a term you might have heard of already called currying. And currying is just a, a fancier word for basically taking the function that I talked about before that took multiple arguments and you start breaking it down into these nested functions that each return a function that can be partially applied as many times as possible in order to produce a function that takes the next argument. So this might be a little bit too theoretical. Let's, uh, let's dig into a little bit of code that shows what I'm talking about. Um, here's an example from my very first video on functions where I walked through side by side a very, very basic function that just takes a single argument and doubles it. And then I compared that on the right to essentially a way of thinking about the function as a mapping 
and the mapping essentially just takes the input as the value that you do in the lookup for the map and then the value once you use that in the uh, lookup for the map is the result and you can call them in essentially very similar ways to produce the same output so if we expand this to the concept of say multiply that takes two arguments what you can see here is we have the outer function which is multiply and then when you call that with your first argument that you want to multiply you'll see that there's a new function that gets returned and this function has the x value that you're multiplying already baked into it and it's ready to receive the y and then that function when it's called returns the multiplication of x times y fairly straightforward what's important to understand here is the way you call it is different from how you might be used to having a function with multiple arguments because as you can see in the lower left there you call it once with the first argument and then instead of a comma you immediately have another pair of parentheses because the result of that was a function so you need to call it again like a function but then other than that it works the same as functions that have multiple arguments so then conversely we can think about that in terms of our, our mapping analogy on the right hand side here where we have just a deeper nested mapping the outermost keys in our map are the first argument right and then the values for each of those keys is then a new mapping and that mapping is essentially with the first parameter already baked in you pass it the second in this new mapping and then the value of that is your actual result and you can see in the lower right how this gets called with two lookups side by side but otherwise it functions essentially the same as the uh, functions that return functions which return functions as often as you need to in order to achieve all the arguments you want to pass to it so that was a that was a big mouthful and probably a big eyeful for you to go through uh, i'm going to give you some time to digest that real carefully and if you have questions or things you want me to go into about this please leave me a comment below i'd love to hear what you think about all this and please also subscribe to the channel for future videos that are on more functional programming concepts and give the video a like because you know you like it.